On today's episode, Dad delivers a PSA. Stay safe, stay home. He thinks he's Superman. And Dad uses a wireless probe. I got my little Superman thing there going. And shows off his lyrical skills. Boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants and Who got this? Dad got this. What's up, DGT Alliance? Welcome to Dad Got This. Today's a little bit different. I'm not quite dressed for cooking. Well, I am. Outdoor cooking. Dad's gonna do some grilling today. We're gonna make some ribs. We're gonna do a variation of the three, two, one rib, maybe a little bit less because I like mine a little chewier than fall off the bone. But this is also a challenge. This is a collaboration. This is the hashtag quarantine cooking collaboration with our buddies over at Kitchen Queers. The rules were, you have to use what you have in the house and you can't make any special shopping trips to make your meal. I happen to have a rack of ribs. I don't have barbecue sauce, so we're gonna have to get creative. All right, let's get prepping these ribs. So I got a small rack of pork loin back ribs here. They're about two and a half pounds. Should be enough just to feed the couple of us. The recipe doesn't really change much depending on how big your ribs are. So the first thing we have to do is just give these a quick prep. And the only thing we're gonna have to do is remove some silver skin. The silver skin is right here. It's the part, the membrane that holds the back of the ribs together. You don't have to take this off, but most people like to, cause you can get a little bit of a, a weird texture when you eat them. All you have to do is try to get a corner up and a paper towel. And then you can grab at it and rip it. I have a video that actually shows you how to break down a set of ribs. And I'll go ahead and link to that to show you guys how to do this so you don't have to watch me go through all this, but I'll send you a link to that. But that's it, really. Get a corner up and rip. We'll keep the seasoning on this one a little simple. We're gonna go with some sea salt. Little bit of black pepper. Not much, because I'm the only one who likes it. And then dad's favorite mix, garlic powder, onion powder. Now we're gonna season these pretty liberally. The last thing, since we're doing barbecue, I like a little paprika on there. It adds some nice color. And has a little bit of flavor. We'll flip it. And even though not a lot's gonna penetrate back here, I still season both sides. So these ribs are just gonna hang out like this for a little while while we go set up the Weber kettle for smoking. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dad Got This Outdoor Grilling Edition. This is Dad's little outdoor space here at our house. I have two Weber kettles. I have a 26 and an 18. And this is where I do most of my grilling. I also have a gas grill over here. You guys have seen me use once or twice, but it's a beautiful day out here in Florida. We've got our kiddie pool filling up with some water for the kiddo and dad's going to get some grill, some grills ready, get some grills ready for some ribs. What we're doing today is we're going to do a quick smoke with indirect heat. And I'll show you how to set up a Weber kettle for indirect heat for a short cook for a long cook. You'll use something like the snake method or the minion method. For this one, we're just gonna do offset with the baskets that I have and everything should be fine. We'll get this set up here. I'll show you how to light some charcoal with some chimney starters. I use a double chimney starter method, it's quicker. And uh, then we'll get grilling. The first thing we need to do is light some charcoal. Dad likes to use my second grill as the base to put my chimney starters on. I use these lighter cubes, place it down right on the center of your grate Place your first chimney starter right on top. Put your chimney on top. And this was something I found on YouTube and it really does work. If you take a second chimney starter and stack it 
on top of the other one, it's gonna come to temp so much faster. It's like a, like a vortex, works great. My one chimney on top of my other and you try to close it up as much as possible. This is one of the reasons I like to have a second grill because I can start my chimney on here and then I can have my grate open on the second grill. This was from last weekend's cook. I did a pork shoulder, but that's an old thing I use for a drip pan. You can use it a couple times. All it's doing is you're gonna put a little bit of water in there and that keeps some moisture in there while you're smoking. Those are my Weber charcoal baskets. They still have some good charcoal in them. I'm just gonna pour my new charcoal right over that. That's only from last weekend's cook and that will be fine. This is dad's backyard. We're on a little pond with a fountain. And we just recently bought a kiddie pool for quarantine. Stay safe, stay home. We are here and the kiddo is loving her new little pool. And we are just enjoying some outdoor time. It's 88 degrees, almost 90 degrees. Dad's looking scruffy because I can't get to a barber. And quarantine's been interesting. I probably haven't left the house in 20 days, but at least I can look at this. This isn't too bad to get up and look at. We should be uh, up to temp soon on this charcoal and be able to start getting our ribs going. They're gonna take about five hours, maybe six. So it's a long process, but I kind of enjoy it. One of the next things we're gonna do is we are gonna set up our digital probe. And dad uses a wireless probe. I got my little Superman thing there going. I use a wireless barbecue meat thermometer probe. It's a dual probe and it'll tell you the temp of the grill and it'll tell you the temp of the meat if you put a probe in it. I'm not gonna put the probe in the ribs. I'm just gonna use it to keep track of the temp of the grill. The grill, when you look at the temp on the outside of the grill top, it's not very accurate. That thermometer is not very good. It tells you the temp there, not really where you're cooking. So these are a better option. I'll show you how to set it up. So we are quarantine cooking and dad's gonna show you how to use his little digital thermometer wireless thing for the barbecue grill and i dropped it which happens a lot all right this one is a two set so it comes with a receiver and a transmitter it's really simple you get probes that you can insert into the meat or into a clip that goes on the grill grate those probes click into here like so Hit power. And it's telling me that it's 81 degrees. Pretty close to that in the shade over here. And like I said, I'm only gonna need one probe today because I'm not cooking the ribs to a temp, I'm cooking them to a feel. And then you have this one, which you hold on. And it, boom, it's telling me that that temp is 81 degrees. So it's telling me 81 degrees, we'll get it set up on the clip when it's ready to go. And this will help me monitor my temperatures for the grill. All right, I'm gonna show you kind of a peek at the charcoal and let you know how to know when it's done. And as you see there, all that charcoal on top is still black. You want it all white and ashed over like that. And that's gonna let you know that it is ready to go. This is still not ready. And we wait, there's a lot of waiting in barbecue. Hey kiddo, you having fun? Our charcoal is ready. And I'm gonna show you our indirect cooking setup. Hold on one second. What is indirect grilling? Indirect grilling just means you're gonna set your grill up so that the charcoal or the hot side is on one side and you have another side where there is no charcoal. Cause if you tried to cook the ribs right on top of the coals, they're just gonna burn. So you're using it more like an oven than an actual grill. So that way, by having everything on the side over there by the water pan, you can cook it over there as long as you want a nice low temperature and it won't burn from the hot heat of the coals. We are ready to pour some charcoal into our grill. First step, remove the top chimney and set it someplace where it will not burn. Dad uses his third grill. I have three grills, it's crazy. This is roaring and ready to go. And we are just gonna pour it right in there. Stage one, charcoal in. Now we're just gonna go ahead and level the charcoal out a little bit so we can get our grill grate on. Grill grate. I'm gonna show you where to place 
this. This is the little thing to tick your probe into, and that's gonna teach us where the temp is. All right, we are gonna place this on the cold side, on there, and that should give us a pretty good temp reading around where we want to know the temperature of the grill. We wanna know the cold side, and that's the temperature we wanna to try to maintain. Next thing to do is just put the lid on this sucker and let it come to temp. So on the Weber, you've got this dial here and that opens and closes the bottom baffle. As you can see, there's some ash coming out. And dad marked his. This is partially about half open and that is full open on that mark. And that lets me know a little bit easier for how to control the temperature. Quick tutorial on how to control the temp on a Weber kettle grill. You have two settings. You have the setting on the bottom down there and then you have the top baffle up here. By controlling the difference between the airflow of the bottom vent and the top vent is how you're gonna control the temperature of your grill. Bottom vent all the way open, top vent all the way open, more airflow, more heat. And that's gonna get your hottest temperature you can get. So what you end up wanna do is you wanna, I like to keep my bottom baffle pretty much open and then mess with the top baffle to get the right temperature. So since we're only going for about 225, I'm only gonna open this about a quarter. And I just do it by, just like that. Now we're gonna go stick our temp probe in because dad forgot to do that. Temp probe, like so. I like to take this and have it a little bit further away from the grill. So I'll clip it on my second grill. We're gonna throw a chunk of wood in there and get smoking. Dad's got a little bit of apple wood. All right, that should be good. That'll give me a little bit of smoke in the beginning. And I like to put the wood right on top. All right, we're ready to get these ribs on the grill. I got my ribs on my indirect side. I got my charcoal and my wood on this side. Temp probe at the end. We're gonna close this sucker down and try and lower the temp. It's getting a little hot. They're gonna go for about two hours at this low temp, as low as we can get it and we're gonna spritz them every once in a while with a little mixture of apple juice and water. I don't know, I've seen people do it. They say it works. I'm not an expert griller, but I can grill. We'll see how it goes. Now we begin the dance. The dance is you're constantly messing with the baffles on the bottom and the top to try and get that perfect temperature. And there's all sorts of digital tools that dad wishes he had. Dad wishes he had a real smoker, but this is what I have and I can work with and I can usually get decent results out of it. You know, the gadget guy and dad wants the DigiQ and everything. It's in a digital fan and it controls the temp directly. Right now, I'm like tappy tap tap, tap tap tap, tap tap tap, constantly trying to make sure that I've got the right temp. Then you're monitoring your charcoal. But what else am I going to do? I'm on quarantine. Ugh. So kiddos in the pool and figured I'd go out over here, give you guys a little tour. This is our little pond with our little fountain. There's fish in there. I have not gone fishing yet, but I intend to. And we got all sorts of like birds and stuff. Haven't seen a gator yet. I'm almost shocked that we haven't seen one because I'm guaranteeing that there's one in there. If you have a body of water in Florida, there's a gator in it. Just assume that. But this is quarantine life for dad and the kiddo and the wife. Fortunately, the wifey is a healthcare worker and she is essential and taking care of people. And she doesn't get to not go out. So dad stays here with the kid and that's what happens. All right, we've been going for about an hour at 2.40, 2.50. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at them and give them a little spritz with the apple juice and water. All right, you can see we still have plenty of uh, charcoal lit. Uh, it's starting to get a little white and ashy. We'll give it a little shake up. I'll open up the uh, baffles a little bit maybe and get the temperature up a little if I have to. But the ribs are starting to get a nice little color on them. They're looking pretty good. Now this is in my little uh, sprayer here and all I'm gonna do is mist the ribs with a little bit of apple juice and water.
And I've watched a couple of YouTubers uh, like uh, Baby Back Maniac and uh, Cooking with T-Roy or T-Roy Cooks. And they like the spritz method when they're doing their ribs. They just kind of like the way they come out. So that's what I'm going with. Just uh, threw a couple more uh, charcoal briquettes just on the top to keep the temp going right. So there's the uh, extra couple charcoal briquettes I threw on the top and I tucked the wood down. We're gonna go ahead and uh, flip this grate. Now I have a special set of tongs just for charcoal and the grate. It's better that way. We're gonna let these ribs go for about another hour at this low temp before we uh, go ahead and wrap them in some tin foil with a little bit of brown sugar and honey, a little bit of butter. I don't have margarine, everybody uses margarine, but I don't have it. Quarantine cooking, hashtag quarantine cooking, use what you got. I got butter. We'll check in on these ribs here in about probably 30 or 40 minutes. <sighs> we are enjoying our outdoor time here during our quarantine. I've got the kiddo there in the pool. Ellie Belly, say hi. I'm in the pool. She's in the pool. This is our uh, quarantine pool. She calls it our Corona pool. And uh, that's what we're doing for the day. Dad's got the grill going. We're chilling in a pool, drinking a couple strawberry daiquiris. This is life right now. The ribs have been going for a little over two hours. We're gonna go ahead and spritz them one more time, let them go for about another 30 minutes. And then we're gonna wrap them because we're getting hungry and we don't wanna wait too, too long. So we'll wrap them for a little while and then uh, hopefully have dinner here soon. All right, my water bucket is gone. So I need to refill that. And looks like I gotta toss the charcoals a little bit, but these are looking great. Starting to get a little bit of a nice color on them. We're getting hungry, so I'm gonna wrap these. We're gonna probably end up doing like a two and a half, one, one or something, instead of a three, three, two, one ribs. We'll see how everything goes, but we're getting hungry. So I'm gonna take these off the grill and set them up here on the gas grill as a table and show you how I'm gonna wrap my ribs. I pulled the ribs off the grill. We're wrapping them now. I put a half a cup of brown sugar, about an eighth a cup of honey and a half a stick of butter. You just pour it right on the ribs and then you wrap the ribs in a package of tin foil. I'll show you how I do it. So you wanna make sure it's sealed. What I like to do is take this end, that end, and then I come up and I, and I tuck into a nice tight package. You don't want steam or juices or kind of anything escaping. That's dad's uh, rib package. All right, what I did was I poured my new charcoal in and then I took some of my hot ashed coals and distributed them throughout the basket. And that should ignite the old, the new charcoal with the old charcoal and get our temperature up. I also have both baffles wide open. I have the top wide open and the bottom wide open. We'll try to get this up to temp and then we'll be able to drop it down after we get it up. That's usually the way I do things. They've been braising for about 30 minutes at a higher temperature in the 350 range. We're gonna go ahead and make our barbecue sauce, take them out of the foil, and then put them on the cool side at the higher temperature of the grill and start getting like that nice crust on them when we baste them with the barbecue sauce. Time to whip up a quick barbecue sauce because we didn't have any, but we had the basic ingredients. Brown sugar and paprika. White vinegar. Soy sauce. All right, once we get a nice little boil going, we're gonna add our ketchup and whisk. Lower your heat down to low and just let it simmer for a little bit. And you got yourself a simple barbecue sauce. 
give this uh, barbecue sauce a little taste. Ooh, that is good. No spice to it. Sweet, acidy due to the uh, soy and the vinegar. It's nice. If you like it spicy, add a little cayenne pepper or pepper or hot sauce or whatever you want. Family doesn't like spicy. Said that a couple times. All right, it's time to go get the ribs crusting up and ready for their barbecue glaze. So here's how you know when you've got a set of ribs that are basically done. They have pulled back from the bone. So the bone is pulled back. The other test you can do if you want like perfect fall off the bone is the, the sag test. If it falls all the way over before breaking, then it's pretty much, we're gonna baste these with some barbecue sauce and these are basically done. A Little bit of time in the grill, perfect. We basted them with some barbecue sauce. We threw the lid back on. It's gonna be in the 300 range probably of heat, three, 350. And we're gonna let it cook a little bit, maybe 15, 20 minutes, just to start baking that sauce into the ribs. Oh, they smell fantastic. I am so ready to eat these. While I got you guys here and we are uh, just waiting for the ribs to finish up, just wanted to ask you guys, how are you guys doing in this whole quarantine thing? You guys doing all right? Everybody okay? How's shopping going? Are you be able to cook food? Have you cooked anything cool? Let me know. Put it down in the comments. One of our neighbors is having a rave over there. You can hear it. Boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants and But we can't go join. We should have our own rave. We are back inside from our pool day, strawberry margarita day, grilling day. And dad has what he has made. Yep, that Dad has what he considers his finest looking rack of ribs he's ever made. It's not big, but it'll be enough for us. But it has this wonderful like mahogany red color on it. it smells, ah, oh, amazing. So we're gonna cut into these, take some good photos and try one and see how they are. Do they taste as good as they look? I hope so. Hashtag quarantine cooking. Taste test time. These look awesome. Oh, that is like meat candy. It's perfectly tender. Still has a little chew to it, which I like. Fall off the bone-ish. I mean, oh, let me just pull that bark off and It pulls right off the bone. Mm. That's just with the glaze that's on there. No extra sauce. That's a win. Those are some awesome ribs. Dad's pretty happy with how his apocalypse cooking came out or hashtag quarantine cooking. Some great ribs, easy to do. You got a smoker, you do them like I do on the grill. If not, take exactly what I did and do it in an oven. Cook them low with the exact spices and everything in the oven. Then take them, wrap them, bump the temp up a little bit, let them braise for an hour or so, take them out, put them on a rack, glaze them with some barbecue sauce and cook them for a little bit longer. Boom. This is a, a modification of the three, two, one, I didn't go three, two, one. I probably went two, one, 30, and they're still perfect. Love them. That's it for Dad Got This right now. I got lots more coming during this if I can pull off videos with the kiddo here. I love cooking with her, so it's fun, but sometimes, whew, I got a crown, a celestial crown. Go check out the uh, latest video, which was uh, the Instant Pot Pot Pie. There's a, a music video by my daughter Eve. So you guys know, dad doesn't do outros. So that's it. For more fun and easy recipes, visit dadgotthis.com.
Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the damn bell. I double dog dare. Come on, you have to do it. It was a double dog dare. I mean, those are the rules.